Richmond station is located on the former London and South Western Railway main line from Waterloo to Reading. The two through lines are served by South Western Railway services bound for Reading, as well as the Kingston Loop and Windsor. Next to the double track through lines are five terminal platforms, which terminate London Underground's District Line and London Overground's North London Line. The latter is normally formed of either Class 378 Capital Star or Class 710 Aventra Dual Voltage Electric Multiple Units. We will be travelling over the North London Line to Stratford, taking approximately an hour to cover the 16 miles and to call at 23 stations. Classic Southern Railway signal box to our left is still in operation, controlling the Underground and the North London line to just beyond Gunnersbury. The LSWR had opened through Richmond in 1846. Our line was also built by the LSWR and opened as far as Hammersmith in 1869. The district didn't start running along here until 1877. The line now curves to the north in the direction of Gunnersbury. The maximum line speed on the North London line is 45 miles an hour. First station on our journey is Kew Gardens and we pass beneath the wide concrete footbridge that has Grade 2 listed protection. It's also not far away from the famous Royal Botanic Gardens, classed as having the largest and most diverse botanical mycological collection of plants in the world. Designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO, Kew Gardens attracts more than 1.35 million visitors per year.
Here the line crosses the River Thames on the Kew Railway Bridge. Pass beneath the Great West Road, the start of the M4 motorway. The island platform of Gunnersbury is surrounded by multi-storey car parks. Having opened with the line as Brentford Road, the name was changed to the present title in 1871. Gunnersbury Junction is where the district line diverges to our right to join the main line from Ealing Broadway at Turnham Green. This is also the original course of the LSWR line to Hammersmith of 1869. This link line between Gunnersbury and South Acton opened in the same year. Pass under the four tracks of the district and Piccadilly lines between Acton Town and Chiswick Park. The closed signal box at Bolo Lane that once controlled our route but now signalling is with the box at Acton Wells. At South Acton, we join a freight-only line from the Hounslow Loop. This line was originally built from Willesden Junction in 1853 by the North and South Western Junction Railway. South Acton was once the terminus of the district line shuttle from Acton Town. Services commenced running in 1905 using a single electric coach with driving cabs at either end. Owing to low usage on the short shuttle service, it was withdrawn in 1959. The crossover north of the station can allow for train reversals.
This was the site of the former Acton Gatehouse Junction, the only branch line built by the NSWJR. It led to Hammersmith and Chiswick Station that opened in 1880 and closed in 1917 during the First World War. Overhead electrification now begins on the approach to Acton Central. The third rail with the 750 volt DC ends at the level crossing and from here onwards we shall be collecting current from the 25 kilovolts AC overhead wire. The pantograph is raised to collect the electric power. When the station opened in 1853 it had been known as Acton. It wasn't until 1925 that the central suffix was added to avoid confusion with the other stations. As well as Acton Central and South Acton on our line, there is an Acton Town on the District and Piccadilly lines, West Acton, East Acton and North Acton on the Central line and an Acton Main line on the GWR Main line out of Paddington. This bridge carries the A40 Western Avenue. The line now crosses the Great Western Main Line. This is followed by a connection coming from Acton Main Line on the left. After crossing the central line, we can see Acton Wells signal box overseeing the non electrified freight link to Dudding Hill Junction on the Midland Main Line. It's a rare London line which is still controlled by semaphore signalling. line ahead forms a connection with the West Coast Main Line. This is the Old Oak Lane Bridge that takes our train over the Grand Union Canal. Wilston High Level Junction, the West London line from Clapham Junction converges. We shall be taking this route later. Now we cross the busy West Coast Main Line.
Wilsdon Junction is the Overground's main hub station. There used to be interchange with the West Coast Main Line, but the platforms on that line closed in 1962, leaving the connection today with the Watford DC Line between Euston and Watford Junction, and Bakerloo Line services from Elephant and Castle to Harrow and Wildstone. This section of line to Camden Road opened in 1860 by the Hampstead Junction Railway. There are connections here from left and right. The former is from Wembley Yard and the latter is a connection with the DC lines used by empty rolling stock. We are now arriving at Kensal Rise. The original station was located half a mile further west, opening in 1861 as Kensal Green and Holston. The station was closed and relocated here in 1873 and the suffix dropped. In 1890 the station became Kensal Rise and since 1916 another station called Kensal Green opened on the DC line. Brondesbury Park was opened in 1908. The service pattern now over the North London line sees eight trains an hour bound for Stratford, whereas in the opposite direction, four go to Clapham Junction and four go to Richmond.
Brondesbury was opened as Edgware Road, but was renamed in 1883. 200 metres to the north of here is Kilburn Station on the Jubilee Line. pass under the wide formation of the Metropolitan and Jubilee Lines and the Chiltern Main Line from Marlebone. West Hampstead Station opened in 1888, taking the name of West End Lane until 1975. Although convenient with the Jubilee and Thameslink stations of the same name, there is no physical connection with the two. Passengers need to alight here and walk up or down the road to reach them. West Hampstead has been comprehensively upgraded with a brand new station entrance added with step-free access for the mobility impaired. In addition, the platforms were widened for the anticipated heavy usage of passengers. We cross the Midland Main Line just as the four tracks emerge from Belsize Tunnel. This is Finchley Road and Frognall, formerly called Finchley Road St John's Wood. Hampstead Heath, 
The station here was rebuilt after a World War II bomb destroyed the original. It was rebuilt again in the 1990s in conjunction with works to allow Eurostar trains to use the North London line. Diverging straight ahead is the Gospel Oak to Barking Line, overhead electrified throughout since 2019. The route was built in 1868 by the Tottenham and Hampstead Junction Railway, running between Tottenham North Junction on the Great Eastern Railway and Highgate Road. The link to Gospel Oak opened 20 years later. Gospel Oak to Barking Line service is every 15 minutes, with Class 710 trains now running to a brand new terminus at Barking Riverside, which opened in the autumn of 2022. This station opened in 1860 as Kentish Town, but in 1867 the name was changed to Gospel Oak. The line now turns to face the south, crossing over the Midland Main Line for a second time. We are now on a tall concrete viaduct over the busy built up area. It's unlikely today that an intrusive structure such as this would have ever been allowed to be constructed. But the fact of the matter is, when manufactured, the viaduct was built over open fields. This station opened in 1867, concurrent with the renaming of Gospel Oak Station to avoid confusion. The station became Kentish Town West a year after the railway grouping in 1924. Sadly, in April 1971, a serious fire broke out and burnt the station to the ground, causing no trains to stop here for nearly 10 years. After much consideration whether to reopen the station, it did so, officially opened by the former Mayor of London, Ken Livingston.
As we turn to the east, we join the electrified freight line from Primrose Hill on the WCML. Camden Town Station was opened 20 years after the rest of the line, but was renamed in 1950 to Camden Road to avoid confusion with the London Underground Station of the same name. Between 1979 and 1985, this was the western terminus of the Crosstown Link Line from North Woolwich, which had been operated by diesel multiple units. These were replaced by EMUs when the service extended to Richmond. This part of the route had an additional pair of tracks to the left, evidence of which is clearly visible by the bridge. This is the oldest part of the North London Line, opening in 1850. The company was known as the East and West India Docks and Birmingham Junction Railway, running from Primrose Hill in the west to the docks at Poplar via Bow in the east. This long-winded name lasted for just three years before a simpler name was given, the North London Railway. A connection is made with the East Coast and the Midland Main Lines to the right, as we now cross over the latter for the last time. This is followed closely by the bridge crossing the East Coast Main Line. This space between the two viaducts was where Maiden Lane Station stood between 1850 and 1917. The high-speed one line from St Pancras now runs parallel to us albeit underground all the way to Hackney Wick. Either side of the two passenger lines are the freight lines. The island platform of Caledonian Road and Barnsbury opened here in 2011 in order for new signalling to be installed and the platforms to be extended to accommodate the five car trains. Signalling since Willesden Junction has been under the control of the Upminster IECC or Integrated Electronic Control Centre. The station had opened as Barnsbury in 1870 but became Caledonian Road and Barnsbury in 1893. Here the line passes under the Arundel Square Gardens. The four lines now merge into three. The third single line is a connection with the East London Line.
an original station, Highbury and Islington is a major interchange with the East London Line, which was extended from Shoreditch to here in 2010. Services run from here to West Croydon, New Cross and Crystal Palace, as well as to Clapham Junction over the South London Line. Interchange is also available with the Victoria Line and the Great Northern and City Railway. The latter was once a part of the Northern Line from 1939 to 1975. Just to the west of Canonbury is a freight-only connection from Finsbury Park on the East Coast Main Line, which passes through the Canonbury Tunnel. It was opened in 1874 and used to carry passengers from Broad Street until 1976. We pass the site of the original Canonbury Station, opened in 1858 as Newington Road and Bulls Pond. The station was renamed at the time of the move in 1870. This was the location of Mildmay Park, open between 1880 and 1934. The East London Line now diverges towards the south and into the new underground station of Dalston Junction. Although no longer a junction, it was located at the southern tip of a triangular junction with our line and continued into Broad Street by means of a viaduct which the East London Line takes today. Dalston Junction once boasted six platforms and closed with the rest of the line into Broad Street in 1986. This is Dalston Kingsland, opened in 1983, later to replace Dalston Junction three years later. An earlier Kingsland station had been located on this site between 1850 and 1865. The third side of the triangle with the Broad Street line converged from the right just here. It was closed in 1966. 
Broad Street itself had been the main terminus of the North London Railway from 1865. During its lifetime, it catered for mainly local suburban services around London, and over time struggled to compete with other mode of transport. Broad Street Station was sited next to Liverpool Street Station, but at a higher level. With a reduction of services from the small terminus, the six-platform station whittled down to just the one, and closed in the June of 1986. This is Navarino Road Junction, that provides a connection with the Hackney lines out of Liverpool Street. The present-day Hackney Central Station opened in 1980, a year after the DMU service commenced between Camden Road and North Woolwich. In 2022, a new entrance on the south side of Graham Road, complete with ticket office and footbridge, was opened to the public. We've now arrived at Homerton. The original station opened here in 1868, while the present incarnation opened in 1985 to coincide with the introduction of services from Richmond to North Woolwich.
The North London Railway diverged here to the right at the former Victoria Park station of 1856 to 1943. The NLR connected with the London and Blackwall Railway at Poplar and their trains ran east to terminate at Fenchurch Street. This was until Broad Street Station opened in 1865. To cater for the increased passenger traffic, Victoria Park Station was enlarged to having four platforms in 1866. Hackney Wick was opened on the same day as the new station at Hackney Central in 1980. This was one of the key transport points for the 2012 Summer Olympics as it was situated 100 metres from the western periphery of the Olympic Park. However, due to potential overcrowding, westbound trains did not stop at the station for the duration of the Games. Here we cross the River Lee navigation. After crossing the River Lee proper is Lee Junction, one part of a double track triangle which allows freight trains to connect with the West Anglia main line at Temple Mills. The link dates from 1881. At Channel C Junction, we branch onto a brand new double track line that takes us to the two dedicated terminal platforms at Stratford. The Docklands Light Railway Stratford International branch now comes alongside us to the left. It was opened in 2011 and runs over the former North London Line tracks to the south of Stratford. More of this shortly. Stratford is a major transport hub in East London, connecting with heavy rail, tube and light rail systems. There are 19 platforms in total here, though 17 are in use for the Central, Elizabeth and Jubilee lines, the DLR branches from Poplar and Canning Town, 
and for the Greater Anglia and C2C services to Essex and Norfolk. We arrive in Bay Platform 2. With the recent National Rail entry and exit figures, Stratford is the fifth busiest station in Britain. This was enhanced in 2007 with the arrival of HS1 at the nearby Stratford International Station and also in 2012 with the Olympic and Paralympic Games. The transformation of Stratford Station is overwhelming. Once a mere village when the Eastern Counties Railway first established themselves here on their line to Romford in 1839. Until 2006, the North London Line used to continue a further six miles to North Woolwich. These platforms underneath the main train shed was where the North London Line used to call at, but have since been taken over by the DLR's Stratford International Branch. The DLR branch takes over the former NLL until Canning Town. The line was originally built in 1846 by the Eastern Counties and Thames Junction Railway, connecting the Royal Docks with the ECR main line. The rest of the former North London line has been taken over by the newly opened Elizabeth Line on their Abbey Wood branch. The line utilises the former Connaught Tunnel, which had to be reconstructed to remove the single-bore tunnel wall, which had supported the access waterway from the Royal Victoria Dock to the Galleons Marina. The two stations at Silvertown and North Woolwich have been lost altogether. The Grand Station building of North Woolwich still survives to this day, designed by Sir William Tite in 1847, now the Grade 2 listed building since 1998. In November 1984, the Queen Mother had officially opened the old station museum to reminisce on what the railways in this area were like in the height of the Great Eastern Railway. The museum had a collection of railway materials, signs and station artefacts, as well as models and non-operational steam locomotives. The borough of Newham was no longer able to finance the museum and closed in 2008, with all the visible displays, including the rolling stock and signage, being removed and moved on to other railway museums located in Essex. There has been a ferry service operating across the Thames to what is now Old Woolwich and what would later to be North Woolwich since the Norman Conquest. This was the catalyst for the Eastern Counties and Thames Junction Railway to extend from Stratford and to provide their own ferry service across the Thames to where the Great Royal Arsenal was located. A fee was charged for each crossing, but in 1889 the London County Council introduced the free steam ferry which is still in use today. The Great Eastern Ferry, which the ECTJR became in 1862, continued in operation for a further 19 years before succumbing to the unfair competition. Another development came in 1912, with the opening of the Woolwich Foot Tunnel under the Thames. Both of the tunnel entrances are Grade 2 listed, the entrance on the southern side, somewhat hidden behind the waterfront leisure centre, remains today as the oldest riverside building in Old Woolwich. We now return back to Wilsdon Junction for the promised trip down the West London line to Clapham Junction. Heading south, we recross the West Coast Main Line.
origins of the West London Line begin as early as 1836, when the Birmingham, Bristol and Thames Junction Railway was authorised to run from the London and Birmingham Railway to the Kensington Basin on the Kensington Canal. The company was renamed the West London Railway and opened on the 27th of May 1844. However, the railway was not commercially successful. We join a connecting link line from the West Coast Main Line, which is these days used by Southern services between Watford Junction and East Croydon. This viaduct spans the Grand Union Canal and the Great Western Main Line out of Paddington. Here we pass the gated entrance to the North Pole Depot, owned by GWR to service and maintain their Class 800 and 802 Intercity Express trains. Signalling has now passed from Wembley, Maine to London, Victoria. You'll now notice that the third rail has reappeared and the driver will now need to change the train settings from the overhead power to the third rail system. Interestingly, Class 378s can actually change traction current whilst on the move, albeit at a reduced speed, while the Class 377 Electro Stars on Southern services the drivers are required to bring their trains to a complete halt. Incidentally, this is also the location of the one-time St Quinton Park and Wormwood Scrubs station of 1871 to 1940. The large web of roads looming overhead is the A40 Westway, the main trunk route from central London to the west. The Circle and Hammersmith and City Lines cross us here. The one-time connection has long since been removed.
Shepherd's Bush Overground Station was opened here on the 29th of September 2008 to serve the nearby Westfield Shopping and Leisure Complex and also to provide interchange with the Central Line, albeit passengers have to exit this station and have to walk across the road to the Tube. Previously, a station existed almost exactly in the same location. Uxbridge Road it was known as and was opened by the London and North Western Railway in 1869 as part of the so-called Middle Circle route. It was in operation from 1872 until 1905 and began at Mansion House on the District Railway, running via Olympia, Paddington and King's Cross before terminating at Aldgate. Located here was a link with the London and South Western Railway on its line from Richmond via Hammersmith Grove Road, opened in 1869 and closed in 1916. The original Kensington station of 1844 was located around about here and was the southern terminus of the West London Railway. The current station we arrive at today was opened in 1863 as a part of the West London Extension Railway and was opened with the name of Kensington but soon became Addison Road to avoid confusion with the other stations that took the name of Kensington in the area, for example West Kensington and High Street Kensington. With the arrival of the District Railway in 1946 from Earls Court, the name was finally changed to Olympia. The district service to the station is now on the weekends and bank holidays only, as well as some events that occur at the Olympia Exhibition Hall, immediately adjacent to the station. This once catered as the British Rail Motor Rail Terminal, which carried passengers and vehicles across Britain. West London Extension Railway ran over the path of the Kensington Canal, crossing the River Thames and to connect with the London, Brighton and South Coast and London and South Western Railways at Clapham Junction. Local and long distance traffic operated over the West London until passenger trains were withdrawn in 1940 but continued to be operated by a sporadic freight service until the 1980s. Building to our right is the Lilybridge Civil Engineers Depot, owned by London Underground as a base for the company's battery locomotives, which can access all parts of the system. The famous Earls Court Exhibition Centres used to be on top of us, but they have since been demolished to make way for the Earls Court Regeneration Scheme. West Brompton Station was opened three years after the West London Railway Extension opened through here. This was followed by the District Railway a further three years later, in 1869, on the company's first westerly extension from Earls Court and remained a terminus until the extension to Putney Bridge opened in 1880. During that time, both the main line and underground stations were separate until the then Transport Minister Glenda Jackson formally unified the interchange between the two lines in 1999.
District Line's Wimbledon branch now passes underneath us, heading towards Fulham Broadway. To our right is Stamford Bridge Stadium, home of Chelsea's football club. This was the site of the WLER's Chelsea and Fulham station. It sustained significant damage during the Blitz of World War II and never reopened after 1940. Imperial Wharf is the most recent addition to the West London Line, having opened in September 2009 at a cost of £3 million. The station is located in the sub-district of Sands End and nowadays serves a brand new residential area which was formerly an industrial area. Now cross the River Thames on the Battersea Railway Bridge, originally called the Cremorne Bridge after the Riverside Public Gardens. The bridge was designed by William Baker, chief engineer of the LNWR, at a total cost of £87,000, a considerable amount at the time in 1863, which in today's money is £8,900,000. Our train would terminate on Platform 1 at Clapham Junction, but at the time of filming, trains on the South London Line were experiencing severe delays, and thus trains were occupying the Overground's two terminal platforms. The signaler based at Three Bridges has told our driver we will therefore now be terminating on Platform 17, a very rare move indeed, but a delight for us as we will get to see this in the video. The line we should be taking diverges to the right. We take the next turning to the right, whilst the line ahead connects with the South Western Main Line into London Waterloo and many South London lines that emanate from London Victoria. now pass underneath the wide formation of three main lines, the Reading Main Line, the South Western Main Line and the Brighton Main Line. The LSWR was the first to open through here in 1838, the LBSCR in 1841 and the Reading Main Line opened in 1846. Incidentally, that line was also built by the LSWR. 
Oddly enough, Clapham Junction Station didn't exist at this time, but in 1863, with the arrival of the West London Extension Railway, it was decided one large joint station be accommodated for all the train services. So, on the 2nd of March 1863, Clapham Junction was born and is today one of 20 major stations owned and managed by Network Rail. It's quite an unusual anomaly to see an overground train on platform 17. The West London Line trains terminate in a dedicated platform alongside the South London Line, forming a useful orbital route around the edge of central London. Clapham Junction has the epithet of being Britain's busiest junction station, as routes from London's south and west termini at Waterloo and Victoria funnel through the station, making it also the busiest in Europe. Approximately 100 and 180 trains per hour pass through the station, some of which don't stop. <laughs> 